I right now I don't want to hear nothing, but is my son okay? So then they come back. Nobody's with me. And the lady come back and she was like, I'm sorry. He didn't make it. Da, 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 da. That's how she said it to me. Like, yo, she had this chaplain saying that I ain't trying to hear nothing y'all got to say. So I lose it. Like I, I black out and I just run out in the middle of the highway on King's Highway. And I fall out in the middle of the highway. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we going to talk. Because I tell you, I said I, my son was my only son. And boy, we would ride or die. We oh, just we'll see you when 17 play. and we oh. just opened the clothing store in Baton Rouge and we were doing a lot of stuff together I raised entrepreneurs so then we and and so when he got God showed me let me How back up die? I was about to say God showed me three days in a row he was gonna die the same way every day did it scare you did it you know me. what it and was and then um, my baby daughter one night we were in Baton Rouge and we were in the house sleep and she just stood straight up in the bed and she said oh lord I love my brother and in her sleep and laid back down and went to sleep and and then when I go to sleep and I dream that some Jamaican excuse me some Jamaican drug dealers were killing about to kill him and they was about to murder him like execution style and in the dream I'm steady telling them don't kill him because everything he needs to do he has not done but I done done everything I think I've, I've already lived this life it was so surreal the next night I dreamed the same exact dream the next night that Saturday night going into Sunday morning I dreamed the same dream I wake up out of my sleep this time and I just start calling him calling I call my godson when I told you I raised and I'm calling and nobody answers the phone so I just cry myself back to sleep then the next morning, because I lived in Baton Rouge, and I'm driving four hours every Sunday to church because I'm the musician. And before my dad died, he says, whatever you do, don't leave Reverend Jones Church. Continue to play for him. So even though I had moved to Baton Rouge, I was still dedicated and faithful to my calling. They weren't paying, wasn't paying me that much money, but my dad asked me to do it, so I was doing it. So we were in Shreveport for church. I stayed at the hotel in Bosia. And so the next morning I get up and I'm calling and I'm calling. And he finally answered the phone. It's like 9, 15. I got to be to church at 10. So he said, Mama, he, he didn't even give me time to say nothing. He just said, Mama, I'm not going to have you late for church. I know Reverend Jones be tripping. You know, he was being funny. and He was always playing a lot. And he was driving my truck. I could hear the wind blowing. I could hear everything going. And next thing, and he says, Okay, Ma, I promise I'm going to be there on time. I'm going to have you at church on time. I was like, all right, Al, don't be playing because Reverend John's going to dock my pay. And I can't afford that. And I hang the phone up. And that was the last time I ever talked to him. So I get to church. My stomach, oh, I get sick. And I just start throwing up and I'm sick. But I'm calling like people in Bozier like, yo, come give me a ride to church right quick because I got to be on time. So I finally get a ride to church. And um, while I'm sick, I never, ever turn my phone face up during church. But this particular Sunday, I'm on the piano and the other lady on the organ, and I turn the phone face up. So when Reverend Jones get up to preach, I look down at the phone, and it says, please go to the hospital. Three back black male with Justin O'Carey. No, it's somebody two black male. I'm sorry, two, that to two you? black male. And it was no, nobody I knew. It was like an unknown number. So it said, please go to the hospital. Two black males in the car. It was actually three people in the truck with Two people besides him in the truck, a girl, he was giving them a ride to drop them off to pick me up, and uh, his friend. And so it was them two and him. And so when I see that, I'm like, that ain't for me, because Al would have texted me if something would happen or whatever, because he was a real responsible kid. So I just gone back door to door and listened to the sermon. Then I look back down again, and it says 911, go to the hospital, because two black males in the car. Now, and in and, and Shreveport, you know you're only going to LSU. So I just go back to the, I get out, I go out of church, and the urchin's standing at the back door. Mind you, he had my truck. So I asked him, could he drive me off at the hospital? He was like, for what? I was like, I don't know, I just need to go there. Like, I'm frantic, panicking. He was like, okay, um, teach I'll take you. So he drops me off. I get there, I'm by myself. Nobody with me, period. And this lady just giving me the run around. She giving me the run around, giving me run around. Now I'm getting the attitude. Now I'm going back to Chucky because you really playing. Like I asked you, like, is this my son? Like he has a tattoo with my Letitia on his neck, and I, and this is what he looked like. And it, and is this him? So she goes this time and she stayed like thirty minutes. But while I'm standing there, this preacher that I don't even know he knew me from being Reverend Jones' musician, and so he walks by me and he turned around and he come back. And he said, you're going through something. And I just looked at him. 
And he went in his pocket and he took out some mustard seeds. And he took them and he put them in my hand. Now at this time I'm in I'm not in the spirit. I'm like mad right now because like I'm trying to see what's so I don't even want the mustard seeds. I don't want to hear what you got going. Mm-hmm. I'm human at the end of the day. So when he gave them to me, I'm just holding them. Then I just get mad and I throw them down. I was like, I don't, I ain't got time for that. I don't, I, right now, I don't want to hear nothing, but is my son okay? So then they come back. Nobody's with me. And the lady come back and she was like, I'm sorry. He didn't make it. Da, 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 da. That's how she said it to me. Like, yo, she had this chaplain saying that. I ain't trying to hear nothing y'all got to say. So I lose it. Like I, I black out and I just run out in the middle of the highway, on King's Highway. And I fall out in the middle of the highway. Wow. And so by this time, my preacher come in. Because the Ursha told him, I dropped Leticia off at the hospital. Don't know what's going on. And he looked, he walked out there. He was old school because he was old. He was already in his 70s. Black with white hair with blue eyes. Wow. Reverend Lennon Jones. What did he say? He said, if you don't got dog it in the house. He said it just like that. Got dog it in the house. If you don't get up and act like you got some sense. He said, if you would have been in truck, he still was going to die. It was his time and not yours. Now get up and act like you got some sins. Wow. And he picked me up, and we went back in there, and that's when I called my daughters, and I, and I called his dad, and I just was sitting there. I was like, God, you know you so wrong. Wow. That's all I kept saying. I stopped going to church after that. I stopped tithing. I stopped I playing for you. church. I was so angry. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we going to talk.